Sean Syndicated presents Shep and Sean, featuring Matt Shepard and Sean Belegian. You're going to have to excuse both Shep and I. We're dragging a little bit. We were up very late last night. Um, we were both waiting for Taylor Swift's latest to drop. Is that how the kids say it? Blake, help me out here. Is that how the kids say it? We we were waiting for, all right, give me a you thumbs up. so out of it when you say it that way. Let we Blake take that. We were waiting for the latest to drop, yo. I'm not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe trick, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't. How, how many it. Taylor Swift songs do you like? Oh, boy, oh, boy. The one song, like, when my daughter was little, she loved that. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. Um, So that reminds me of when she was little. Yeah. So I Like, honestly, I, I have a place for that song. Like, oh, no jokes. Uh, you know, no jokes. I really yeah. do. I have a place for that side song because it reminds me of like when she was like, I don't know, six or seven, however. Like, yeah. yeah. Other than that, I, I don't know. Like, they all sound the same to me. I it, And people get so mad, Shep. I like, honestly, you and I were just talking about this. Okay. I can still listen to ACDC. I can still put Metallica on. I can still put, I can listen to GNR like all day. Like, honestly, I really can. And people hammer me, dinosaur, whatever. I the fact that people get mad cracks me up. Like, oh, how dare you? The Swifties get mad. It's like, dude, whatever. I don't care. Good. I'm not your demographic. It's okay. I'm not your demographic. In fact, if you had said you do like her and you do listen to her music, they would probably rebut by saying, "Oh, now I really feel old." <laughs> dinosaur. Look. <laughs> I, I, I get that a lot of artists sound the same because you mentioned ACDC, one of my favorite bands ever. Absolutely mm -hmm. love them. Anytime they come on, I keep it on. Matter of fact, I probably like more of their old stuff than I do like Back in Black, their most famous album. But uh, I would say, I would say this. Art. Yeah, I, I just, you know what? It's okay. They sound the same from album one through album 19. But that's because... It's my sound. I like it. They're really good. I, Metallica, you can tell when there's a Metallica song on, right? Mm -hmm. So that's not, a, that's not a knock. It's just that's who they are. That's their sound. Most bands have that. I think there's very few who actually go outside and you're like, oh, man, I didn't realize that the lead singer of Disturbed actually sang that song. That's interesting to me. Doesn't happen very often. No. No, so I mean, listen, like we were, we were giving Blake the business, okay? We love Blake. Hey, Blake, I don't give a crap if you like the music or not. Like, seriously, go like what yeah. you like. Everybody, sure. Shep, we ran into this yesterday. Like, here, here's the classic radio segue: the new Lions uniforms, right? What? I thank you, thank you. And and I made up the point yesterday, Shep. The Lions are so hot right now around here. You could run out in Smurfette blue. I mean, just pure Smurfette blue with a little Smurfette on the side of the helmet. You know, yep. pretending she's a lion. Oh, look how cute she is. Put pink polka dots all over the gosh damn jersey. And everybody around here would go, MCDC, grit. Ah. You're 100% right. I, a friend of mine put out on social media, if you don't like the new uniforms, you're a nerd. I'm like, I'm a nerd. Okay. No problem. I got right. no, no issue with it. And, I've, and, been called, I've been called worse. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Nerd's not going to affect me. I, I like tradition. Sorry. I mean, when you mess with certain things, I was in the minority on this. I think now, not back when it happened, when the Pistons came out with the teal, I threw up in my mouth. Yeah. Because I don't know why you want to mess with something when you're red, white, and blue, and it looks beautiful. No. It looks clean. I think the Lions uniforms... I don't like the thick stripes, okay? You want to go throwback, you want to go way back in the day, then don't go there. But I can tolerate it, right? I think your uniform should look clean. There are certain teams whose uniforms, and I think some of it's associated with winning, but certain teams, your uniforms, 
I really like. I like Dallas. I like San Francisco. I like Pittsburgh. They're a clean look. Mm -hmm. No, and and it's funny, Ship, to that point, into tying it in with Taylor Swift. It, like, seriously, people got mad. Like, they, they were they were, like, offended that you didn't like that jersey. And haters gonna hate, you know, and all that stuff. And it's like, Dude, whatever. If you like it, like it. But I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not going to fall all over myself saying something that isn't true about how much right. I have that jersey. I, honestly, you know what it looks like to me. This this is what I, I I brought up to somebody. It looks like the Millen era decade of despair. Lion jersey decided to cohabitate with the Carolina Panthers. Exactly. They That's exactly what I said about Carolina. They had they had mad passionate sex, and after nine months, they that was their offspring. They 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 brought it. That was their offspring. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. Yeah. A amen, man. I, that's exactly how I feel. I, I don't. What happened to being okay if you got a good looking uniform and tradition and two color uniforms? Oh, I know what happened. We got a chance to make more money. One hundred percent. You you've been consistent on this. You're a big Spartan fan, but you hate that lime green stuff. Can't stand it. Oh, Michigan it's... State's got one of the coolest logos in athletics. The Spartan hell, the Spartan on your hat right now is one of the coolest logos. What are you messing with it for? Yeah. Embrace it. Love it. I say this story probably too often. I remember going to Michigan State, talking to a lot of different people. I got three different cards from people. Okay. Mm -hmm. One had a block S on it. One had the Spartan logo on your hat, and one had the Spartan crest of Michigan State University. And I'm thinking to myself, why can't you just pick one? <laughs> why do you have to have so many different ones when the perfect one, at least in my opinion, I'm not saying my opinion is always right, is right on your cap right there. I wouldn't it. mess with that on my helmet if you paid me. I'd it's love it. perfect. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with Michigan State's uniforms from when they went to the Rose Bowl? In 1987, nothing, but you got to have the gold and you got to have the highlight color green and you got to have this and you got to have that. We've gotten to the NFL now where pros are just as bad. I shouldn't say athletes because it's probably not the athlete. It's probably the front office. They're as bad as some of the colleges. The colleges say they do it because the kids love it. Rod Wood said the same thing. Now we have choices. Choices for what? Yeah. You're either at home or you're on the road. Yeah, I don't get it. And you got to put your hands together and have the logo of the team on there too. You can't miss that. You know, you need those gloves where you put those hands together and it makes a big giant S. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's fine. I know. Oh, you sound like grandpa. Listen, if you don't, if you don't accept that this is about, you know, advertising and marketing and making right. money, right. um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. And, and you can't, you can't get mad at me or Shep or, there were countless people out there. Trust me, I heard from them last night. Well, everybody was falling all over themselves saying, yeah, grit. Yeah, MCDC wanted this, so that's why I love it. Yeah. Whatever. If MCDC so wanted a liverwurst sandwich, is everybody going to go out and buy one? Right. Oh, God. Grit. What does grit have to do with your your uniform anyway? Yeah. I, I, I don't get it. I don't I get it. Everybody feels like they got, like, back in the... When the Pistons did that teal, everyone thought, oh, you got to get teal in there. Now it's like everybody's got to get black into their uniform somehow, some way. And there's really not that many, I guess, but others have those accents. Remember, you and I were talking a while back when the, the Lions had the black accents. Yes. I thought that looked like absolute garbage. You alluded to it earlier about the Matt Millionaire. I think it looked like garbage. Just leave it the way it is. It's fine. If you're going to pay homage to that era, you go get your black jerseys with the Cheeto stains all over it from Mike Williams. You know, that just sitting, sitting and just eating Cheetos at will, telling everybody how hard he's going to work. So just, just, a little, some, just some orange stains all over the jersey, all right? Our buddy Killer nailed that. Like, I don't know if you remember. Like, Killer, I remember one time we were there, and he walked up to me. He goes, dude, that guy is telling people what they want to hear. It, yeah. Like 100%. He's just telling people what they wanted to hear. And of course, about five years later, when, when his career was coming to an end, he was like, I learned my lesson. You know, I, I was trying to say things to people, but I didn't follow through. But now I learned my lesson. And that yeah. was, you know, it's unfortunate because there was a lot of talent there. Jason said, morning, Sean and Shep. Happy Friday to both. 
Hope you and yours are doing well. Yes, uh, with the Stanley Cup playoffs coming on, uh, I'm yeah. doing very, very well. Uh, we'll get to, to more of that in a second. Uh, Tim said ACDC substitute vocalist for Brian Johnson. Axel Rose's proof in the eyes of some fans, some can do no wrong. Well, other, but other bands have had, other bands have had, you know, lead singers when it was time to move on. Van Halen did it, for example. There's plenty of bands where they've moved on from a certain guy and then they've had success. And it's not always a lead singer either. I mean, Metallica went from one really good bass player to another really good bass player. So I, I don't know. It's, it's not that they, maybe he's saying that in a complimentary way. They can do no wrong. They sure seem to like they pick the right people. That's all. Boy, I, it, we're showing our age. It doesn't seem like that long ago. A lot of people thought ACDC was done after Bon Scott died. And then you come out with Bon Scott, or excuse me, with Brian Johnson just a few months after that. I mean, it's yeah. insane. That was only 44 years ago. Jeez, oh, Pete. Um, intent to deceive asks, Kane wants term. What's the max term Iserman should give him? Great I question. Think that, is, that is a great question. Shep, you want to go first? Did you prove things to people? But I would also be brutally honest with him. And I would say, Patrick, everybody and their brother noticed you started to run out of gas at the end of the year. Was it you weren't in game shape, which isn't his fault because he missed a, you know, a long period of time after surgery. Mm -hmm. But I hope you understand we, we, we just can't do much more than that. We, we can't, you know, you what's have to, the, what's the money room. though? What's the money? Because Raymond and cider are up for big raises. So well, what, it's the, when we say term, I need to be a little bit better than that. I can't okay. say just two years for, what? for, for me, Shep, I think. Eric, the $27 million with the cap going up $4 million. Yeah. Um, you just brought up the magic word that, that like, I hope people are taking this into consideration. You, it, Mo and Lucas, period. End of story. Do what you have to do to lock them up. There's your linchpin. There's the two guys that are here that you can build around that he didn't have when he started here, that right. he did have when he was in Tampa. Right. Um, They're more important. 100%. Um, I would not, I wouldn't go too high. I, I'm telling you that much. I'd say, look, you said you wanted to be here. What's I hope you high? understand. I'm trying to rack in my head right now, just off the, off the top of my head. Um, 16 million? Okay. Two years, 16 million? I think that's too high. I wouldn't okay. do that. I All wouldn't. Right. No, I, I wouldn't. No. Okay. No 14? way. 14? 12? I would go 12. How's that? Okay. I would go 12. How about you? Yeah, I, I think you may have to, um, I don't know what their salary cap situation is right now, but I also understand they have to address certain needs. It's mm -hmm. not just Patrick Kane. Mm -hmm. If Patrick Kane doesn't understand that, then it's thanks for everything. Really appreciated the season. I have to say goodbye. Um, so if he would be willing to take two years, $12 million, I'd be thrilled. But I, you know, What's it going to cost Raymond? What's it going to cost Cider? Those two are my first priorities. And you've got to get somebody either in net or on the blue line. And I personally, I'd like a top six forward myself, but those, it's not, everybody wants those. You're not going to get that. You may have to swing a deal to get the guy in net because your, your net minders aren't ready for a while. So. That would be my guess. But yeah, I mean, two years, $12 million, maybe even a little less, 11 and a half. I'd be really happy. Kane, uh, I, th I think it was Tim that asked, uh, Kane said, what did he get uh, this past year? It was 275. So he, listen, he did his part. He proved he can still play at this league and he, he proved he can still play at a high level, in particular in clutch moments. You have to give him his roses for that. Um, the Red Wings took a chance on him. He took a chance on the Red Wings in fairness as well. You, you have to look at this both ways. But one of the things that I love about Steve Eiserman in, in the course of his career, and, and I think every general manager should be like this, you have to think with your head, not your heart. Not your heart. Period, end of story. And he's not afraid to make a move or get rid of a guy, even if, if people like him. You know, if, if you look mm -hmm. at his history in, in Tampa, that was the case. If you look at his history so far here in Detroit, everybody and their brother wanted Anthony Mantha to work. He, de right. he determined pretty early on, this isn't going to happen. And, and so he moves on from it. And uh, uh, again, Shep, I hate to keep going back to, to Miguel Cabrera. Um, 
I think that was a contract that was a reward and yes. was done with more heart than it was head. I, I, I thought it then, and I think it now. I, and I agree 100% with you. Too many times you find general managers and fans in general who will say, it's what you've done for me. It's about what you're supposed to do for me. Your yeah. contract should not be a reward for what you've done in your career because sometimes you haven't done it for that team. 100%. Okay. Yep. And you've been rewarded throughout your career. You want to give them a little bit extra. That's one thing. But it can't handicap you moving forward. I do not, I would not want to sign Patrick King to a contract that's going to handicap, handicap me moving forward. And as you've told us numerous times, Steve Eisenman wants to build this roster so it is a consistent playoff contender. You can't do that if you have an aging forward who makes too much money and isn't productive. Can't do it. Nope, can't do it. Uh, get your thoughts on that. Whatever else tickles your fancy on a Friday morning. Glad you could join us. He's Matt Shepard. I'm Sean Belegian. I want to tell you about our friends at Wealth Advantage Group. I saw these two guys yesterday, stopped into the office. I, I needed some handsome in my life. I don't have enough handsome in my life. You see what I look in the mirror every day. So I needed to see those guys. And if you're ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group. Located in historic downtown Northville, owned by two brothers with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, Mike and Jeff can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. Can't thank these guys enough for being our partners. If you could thank me for watching this show, I thank you as well. Do yourself a favor and contact these guys. They can help you like they've helped so many other people just like me. The investment world is a complex one, and if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to work with the experts. Reach out to the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or view their website at www.thewealthadb.com. Uh, please support those who support us. They're great guys. They'll take care of you. Reach out to these guys. You will be very, very glad you did. Uh, Shep, you know, it's interesting because another year that uh, the Red Wings do not make the playoffs. It's the second longest streak in the National Hockey League behind the Buffalo Sabres. I, I still just kind of shake my head at that. Um, but here's the one interesting thing about that. So I'm I'm like in the back of my head right now. I'm playing, all right, I got to get the pulled pork on at 8.30 tonight. Then I got to get the wings on at 10 o'clock. There's something to be Don't said. Don't forget about the sausage, Sean. Don't forget the sausage. Never I missed forget that on that last week. Never forget. Oh. Shep was over last Saturday. He had, he had some of the, the Cajun shrimp that we mm. made, some ribs, et cetera. But, uh, Shep, honestly, there is something to be said about just watching the games and not having a rooting interest. And it, then I say to myself, overtime for everybody. I want, right. because I am a miserable goo-goo baby when my team's in overtime. Don't talk to me. Don't get near me. Don't text me, et cetera, et cetera. I'm serious when I say there's something just cool about being able to sit back and watch the damn games without a rooting interest. Yeah, I, I love it. I, I watched a little bit last night. Um, I wish the Red Wings were in it too. I'm fascinated by round three of Kings and Oilers. Oh. Um, and, and, and Vegas taking on Dallas should be a really good matchup. I think the NHL has some really cool matchups uh, early on in this postseason. And it's going to be uh, fascinating theater. The other thing I marvel at is, you know, who's going to be the Hart Trophy winner. I mean, who's going to win that award? I don't know. When's the last time you've seen something this, so many players deserving of at least consideration, okay? I'm not saying that they should all win it. I'm not saying Sidney Crosby should win it, but there's probably some people thinking, you know what? For what he was able to do for that team, where would they have been without him? It's, it was a phenomenal season. Austin Matthews scored 69 goals. I don't think he's going to win the heart. No. That's incredible stuff. I think it's Cooch. I got to be honest with you. I think it's Cooch. I think, I think it's McKinnon. Okay. I, I think Nathan McKinnon's going to win it. And so we'll, we'll bet a sandwich on that. Okay. That's my bet. So I had, I've, I've got a question for you. And I know we got some other texts and we want to get to those too. Somebody said, I'd say he wants three years minimum. 
regarding Patrick Kane. Uh, Tim Tim said twelve would be generous. Uh, it, it would be generous. Very As generous. Sean mentioned, he made about three million this past season. He had a lot to prove. Once you prove something, and you believe his commitment, and I think just coming back from the injury shows commitment in the first place. Players like him a lot, right? He helps others. He's bad defensively, but he helps others offensively. Maybe twelve is a little generous, but not by much. I don't think. I, I don't. I don't, I don't think. The, I don't think he'd sign for anything less than ten. Do you over a two year span? I don't. And, and he may not sign for two years. I don't know. Um, definitely a reward, says Tim. And finally, our man Blake says you got to call wealth management. Otherwise, Sean's going to say Larkin doesn't deserve to play high. <laughs> There's, I love there's, that. I love there's, that. <laughs> Such a good so my, here, here's my question to you. I had this, I, I teased this the other day when we talked. Tiki Barger came out and was pretty passionate about saying J.J. McCarthy, the quarterback of the University of Michigan, is not a guy that he would trust or take. He just doesn't get the hype. Okay. He doesn't understand why he's rising. He doesn't understand why a team would suddenly move up, okay? He says there's a, he didn't say red flag, but to a certain extent, that's kind of what he's alluding to. Here's exactly what he said, Sean. All right. The J.J. McCarthy thing, I'm tired of hearing it. His film doesn't say he's a first-round quarterback. His film doesn't say, I need to get rid of all my assets to go draft a guy because a lot of guys a lot of this stuff doesn't translate. So he also mentioned the ground attack that, that Michigan was so reliant on. I guess my question would be this, not, not just to Tiki Barber, but to anybody. How much does winning matter? And I know it's a team sport, but when you're, you've got 28 wins over the past two seasons and 40 wins over the past three years, that's pretty damn good. In 28 career starts, he went 27 and one. That's the best mark of any quarterback since 1971 when you were calling Chuck Ely at Toledo. And he was 35 <laughs> no. Okay. That, that's pretty damn good. Yes. He had a, so he had a win rate better than Jameis Winston, Trevor Lawrence, Kellen Moore, who's probably a bad example because he wasn't a first-round pick, Tua Tagovailoa, right? His completion percentage at 73.2, second best in the country. And when people say, oh, he's just a dumb – no, Bo Nix was number one in the country. His was 6.8 of average depth of target. McCarthy mm -hmm. was 9.5 compared to Nix's 6.8. You look at it from an NFL standpoint, you had guys who were pretty close to leading, like leading the NFL, and theirs is less than 9.5. So it's not like he's not going downfield. And he gets it done in the red zone too. I'm I'm a little confused. I, I think I've already said this. I don't think I'd take any of the five quarter four quarterbacks if I had a top five pick. But it does show you how teams are desperate. I'm wondering why people don't buy into him. Help me with that. I wish I could give you the answer. We have been um, hammering on this for months, Shep. Like Blake and I have been talking about it. And this was going back to late December, where, uh, again, why people don't learn this lesson every year is absolutely beyond me. When some of the quote unquote experts and mock draft guys had J.J. McCarthy going late first round and even early second round. And yeah. I said in January and I say today. He's going in the first round, he's going in the top 10. There's no doubt in my mind he's going in the top 10 and I would be willing to bet another sandwich on that. Somebody is going to grab him. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Sometimes, Shep, and this is where guys like you and I, and I think a lot of general managers as well, sometimes people overthink things, okay? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is a simple eye test thing to me. You can talk about every measurable. You can talk about every. When I watch J.J. McCarthy play, okay, that guy has been in control. Period. He has been in control. What he does on the rollouts, okay, when he's under pressure and throws those dimes down the sideline, those are throws that I don't see a lot of quarterbacks making, okay? And and that's that's that jumps out to me. That's something that 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 I think sets him apart. 
Um, is he in that group of guys? Absolutely. And, and you're going to see it play out in the draft six days from now. There's no question in my mind. I'm not saying he's going to go one. I think we all know who the Bears are going with in, unless they pull a, a total surprise. But I'll give you I'll give you Jaden Daniels, okay? Mm-hmm. I would rather play it safe with, with J.J. over Jaden Daniels any day of the week. Any day of the week. I'm serious, mm-hmm. okay? Caleb, I get it. There's a ceiling there. There's some questions about what's between his ears. I don't know that. I know he's done some strange stuff, but I don't know if that affects his play. But if if you're if you're talking about after Caleb, if if we're going to use Caleb as he is for sure the number one, and it sure sounds like he's going to be, um, I'd put JJ up there with any of the other guys. No mm-hmm. problem, any way, shape, or form, especially working with a guy like Jim Harbaugh. You like him or hate him, this is a guy that that has had some success with quarterbacks over over the past. So no, Shep, I I. I, I wish I could give you a counterpoint for the sake of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I can't. I don't get it. I felt the same way for four months now. Yeah, I think it's a great point about Harbaugh um, because you would think a guy like that would get his quarterback NFL ready. Now, it sure didn't help with Jake Rudock, but there's a huge disparency, discrepancy rather, between Jake Rudock and J.J. McCarthy's talent. Jim Harbaugh, to a certain extent, won with Cade McNamara who's a nice quarterback at the collegiate level, he's not going to be an NFL quarterback. He got to a Final Four with Cade McNamara. That's pretty impressive. Um, so I, I'm i with you on that. You would think he would... I don't know if I'd take him ahead of Jaden Daniels. I'm not even sure where I would take him or which team is the perfect fit. All I know is just because you're hearing a lot about him and rising, first of all, you can't always believe what you hear, but just because you're hearing a lot about it, doesn't mean that he can't do what many people expect him to be able to do. We all get saturated, oversaturated with certain television, radio, podcast talent, and athletes and entertainers. Hi, Taylor Swift. It doesn't mean that they don't have talent. Um, let me say this about, I think Jaden Daniels is going to get his wiener knocked out in the National Football League. I do. Garrett? Yeah, I, he, he's going to get his baby carrot knocked out in the in the National Football League. Um, the, the guy likes to take kids. Sometimes uh, our, our mutual friend Scott Bischoff pointed this out to me. He he like showed me a clip of film of of like Jaden Daniels literally running into guys. Yeah, like dude, you will you die can reel that in, Sean. You league. can you can reel that in. I you can say, hey, so enough is enough. Case. Yeah, I hope so for his case. Uh, Michael Husack from Wealth Advantage Group, uh, half of the Hanson brothers, said J.J. was the best locker room and on the field leader at quarterback possibly ever for Michigan. He can make all the short throws. He has good pocket movement and can scramble. The only question is how consistently can he be throwing the long ball? We will see. I think the other thing is because he is so nimble of foot, how accurate is he on the run? More and more football players at the highest level and at that position, have to be able to throw on the run. I mm-hmm. know Jared Goff is, is is kind of an exception, but look at the best quarterbacks in the NFL. They move. They don't necessarily have to be running. I, there's a huge misconception. Oh, in I would agree more. Yeah, I, and, and I'm not saying he was saying that. All I'm saying is there's a huge misconception. I, co- head coaches don't want their quarterbacks to run in the NFL because of what you just brought up with Jaden Daniels. But you have to be able to move. And J.J. McCarthy for sure can move. How well does he throw the ball on the run? I think at the collegiate level, he showed that. Do they believe that skill set can translate to the next level? That's a big question that has to be asked and answered. To your point, I always bring up a guy that you saw up close and personal in the Mid-American Conference and and had a, a, a fantastic career, Ben Roethlisberger. Absolutely. Here's a guy, he is a massive target. He, he, you know, six foot six, 522 pounds, whatever he was. I mean, he was a massive, massive target. Not Jared Lorenzen, Sean. And I know Not you Jared. love Jared Lorenzen. Yeah. Right? But, but you, you, Shep, how many times did you see it with, with Ben? That pocket feel and that little slide step that That's he That's all made. you need. He yeah. always had that little slide step that, that mm-hmm. just evaded the rush. And, I always marveled at Ben Roethlisberger at, at the league. Now, his arm died. He became a noodle arm his last year in the league. But 
I mean, honestly, when you look back on his career, for that guy to be that big and 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 to avoid pressure the way that he did, that was amazing. And you're absolutely right. You don't you don't have to be a gazelle out there, okay? You don't have to take off and scramble and run all over the place. It's as, it's as simple as pocket presence and just a little slide step sometime to keep a play alive. Yeah, I'll say three other names um, that that fit that description too: Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Philip Rivers. One hundred percent. All of those guys are big. They're strong. Their pocket presence is impeccable. They know when to move up, when to sidestep. That's what they mean about mobility. I don't need Michael Vick back there. Okay, what I need, or Fran Tarkenton way back in the day. Huh. I need a guy who can move away from pressure. And when pressure comes and you have to roll, you can throw on the run with accuracy. And I think J.J. McCarthy can do that. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know whether or not he can do that at the NFL level with as much success as he had at the collegiate level. Well, Shep, I mean, that's part of the beauty of the draft. I I always go back to this, okay? There are a lot of people out there that don't realize at one point in time in our lifetime, the NFL draft was an afterthought that appeared in the Detroit news the next day. It yeah. wasn't televised. It wasn't ballyhooed. And I've said this for years, and I'm going to continue to say it. Mel Kuyper Jr. deserves so much credit for turning the draft into what the draft is today. Mm -hmm. You can't put a price tag on it. You just can't. And I always like Mel Kuyper Jr. or hate him. It's inconsequential to me. What that guy started and what that turned into is is insanity. I always bring up, Shep, I don't know if you and I have ever had this conversation. I remember vividly in 1990, a beautiful draft day. It was a Saturday. All my buddies wanted to go hang out. Let's go to Heinz, dude. Yeah, all right, and all that. And, and me and a couple of my buddies were like, no, we're going to stay in and watch the draft. They they were so dumbfounded at that. What, what are you, you're going to stay in and watch the NFL draft? Yeah, it's fascinating. What are you... Shep, this wasn't, like, not that long ago, this wasn't that ballyhooed and embraced it as, as it is now. And it's become a made-for-television event, mm -hmm. heck, prime time. And, and so with that, however, comes all these people who are draft experts. And, and right. that's what I always appreciate is you are one of the first guys to say, I don't know what I don't know. And it's okay to say that. Like, you're not going to lose any credit if you say, exactly. I don't know what I don't know. You know? Yeah, 100%. And, and a lot of guys who now make a career out of it owe that to a guy like Mel Kuyper. It's 100%. similar to what baseball players should be talking about with Kurt Flood or African-American players should be talking about with Jackie Robinson. Those are the things. Look at you broke that mold. Mel Kuyper did that. And not just in the NFL. Really, think about how much bigger it is now. Major League Baseball does it. Hockey does it. The NBA does it. Networks need programming. This is good programming. Let's bring people to the event. Let's bring the athletes to the event. Get the interview. Let them put on the sweater. Let them shake hands. Let them bear hug the commissioner. Let them put on the cap. Really cool stuff. Yeah. It, what, it, are it, what, it, what are you laughing about? No, because... <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. I want to tell you about legacy in a second because, I, but you talked about the hockey thing and it, it's kind of made me cringe. And I, I think you'll appreciate this. But let me tell you about our friends at Legacy. I'm going to say the same thing about these guys. Appreciate them being a partner. And if you like what we're doing, please do me a favor. And in turn, you're going to be doing yourself a favor. Contact the guys at Wealth Advantage Group and contact our friends at Legacy Partners because thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance. Our friends at Legacy are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents and provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. This isn't going to cost you a thing. Get your quote. You're going to find out what thousands have already found out. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And at the same time, the most important thing, saving you money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you are paying too much and could be underinsured. What are you waiting for? Give Legacy Partners a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, medical Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Get your pet. 
586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Shep, you brought up something and it made me laugh because I'm, okay, so there's a difference, right? You're calling the Tiger games. You are there day in, day out, every day. You see these guys 162 games and then some, right? Well, everybody else has the opportunity to see it. They don't have the up close and personal, but you can watch the games on television, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you can draw your own conclusions to things. I think part of what scares me now with some of this um, scouting stuff, okay, is a lot of, and I'm going to use the world of hockey as, a, as an example, and this is why I, I kind of laughed and smiled. You don't get a chance to see the NTDP every game. You don't right. get a chance to see an OHL team every game. And there are guys, and I'm just going to flat out say it without saying any names, that are just talking straight out of their butthole. I mean, everything, everything that they're saying is straight out of their butthole and second information. Now, how do I know this? Because when I was doing the games, I never saw them one time. Yeah. I never, ever, ever saw them one time. And again, I'm not trying to go snob on you because I get it. You know, you can you can see games at the major league level. You can see games in the NHL. But when you're talking about trying to scout 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, going and actually putting your eyes on them physically is kind of important. And I, that's why, you know, we were talking about it the other day. I, I think about Quinn Hughes and Brady Kachuk. I would have taken either one of those guys in a heartbeat. Now, was I biased because I saw them 40 times a year? Absolutely, I was. But I know what they could do. I saw what they could do. And unfortunately, unfortunately today, we have far too many people out there that, that are either going word of mouth or asking somebody else about their opinion as opposed to going out there and putting their two eyes on it. And that that's why I giggled. And I'm going to sound like an old man and snobby, but it's the gosh damn truth. Well, it happens in every sport, though, too. And, and I think it happens because, I mean, look, with, with, with hockey, it's such a global sport. Basketball has become much more global. Baseball has always kind of been that way. But football, the difference with football is you can actually do that because there is nobody else playing football. Yep. Not our kind of football. They're playing their kind of soccer slash football over there. But here, they're playing our football. And that's when you put your eyes on people. And I think that's why so many people are passionate about it. They feel like, you know what? I saw this guy play at least once at Tennessee. I got to have him. My argument has always been, you see a guy once, he might have had a bad game. It happens it. once in a while. You know what you I'm saying? It. Yeah. Oh, it's... It Shep, I mean, that's the same thing. I love the World Junior Championship, right? I, th I think yeah. it is one of the best events on the sporting calendar all year. I'm, I'm serious. I have no problem saying that. Again, consider the source. But sometimes, okay, in the course of a couple weeks, especially if you're playing, I'm not going to name a country, but, but a less than hockey power. Hmm. A guy could be a heck of a player on a less than hockey player, and he might not have the opportunity to show it in any way, shape, or form. 100%. Yeah. And I think sometimes people come away from that and say, oh, I, I, I saw that Shep guy playing for Hungary. I, I, don't, I don't know why people make such a big deal about him. And it's mm -hmm. like, knock it off. Like, stop it. You're showing your idiocy. And, and I, I think, listen, and don't get me wrong, I, I think we're a better place with more information. I really firmly believe that. E even the people that talk out of their butthole, we're, I think we're a better place with, with more information. But so much of that started with Mel Kuyper Jr. It really did. Yeah, it's such a fine line. I mean, look at the NBA draft coming up this year, Sean. The, the, some of the guys who are projected to be at the top, I don't know who they are. Yep. I, I, I don't, I, I've never seen them play in France, right? Uh, but yep. I, I do know this. Dalton Connect can shoot. But that's because I watched a, a number of his games at Tennessee and, and the NCAA tournament. Reed Shepard can shoot. I wouldn't say I necessarily would take him in a top five, but it, the guys that they've got considered as the top picks, you look at their statistics in the French League or wherever it may be, Lithuania, what are they averaging? 
nine points a game, seven yeah. rebounds a game. You're like, how is it? That's just, you know, that's just the way it is. It's such an international sport now with the NBA, and it's always been that way for the NHL. I can't expect everybody to know what a kid is like in, 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 in the Swedish Elite League or what they are, are doing in the Western Hockey League or the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. So that's probably unfair on my part. But I just think you got to be careful. And like you said, you got to consider the source when you're looking at somebody who is scouting those players. Absolutely. Chris, hello, fellows. Hello to you, Chris. Uh, let me tell you about our friend Lindsey Broadwell before we get some final thoughts on here on a Friday. When it is time for you to sell your house, buy both, doesn't matter. You need to contact the right agent. That agent is Lindsey Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business, and when it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when you're finding your new home. Buyer, seller, first-time buyer, doesn't matter. You want the expert. You want Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. Hey, Shep, Darko Milicic, right? I mean, listen, whether people want to admit it or not, everybody was drooling over that guy. I didn't know the first thing about him. I didn't, I remember being on the air. I Look, I don't know the first thing about him. I know what everybody's saying about him. But well, I don't know the first. Well, who is really? Oh, you mean you mean the people the, in the know? Supposedly, yeah, the know. I, everybody. Yeah, yeah but everybody. Then, but then you go to a, his workout at the palace and uh, or the practice facility, and he he wasn't making squat. Yeah. Look, p- people, you and I had somebody we worked with at an old radio station who said the Pistons got to do whatever they can to get Michael Olawa Candy. That's right. Oh my god. Two and a half years later, he's gone. Oh he's my out. Goodness. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, it happened with Greg Oden. It's happened with, it happens with a lot of different players. Okay. Yeah. You can name hockey player after hockey player after hockey player who was drafted ahead of this guy and that guy. And you're like, how in the hell did that happen? I mean, TJ Watt was a 30th overall pick for crying out loud. How did that happen? Scouts can be wrong too. You know, 100%, 100%. I, it was funny. You brought up the NBA draft though, because last year, um, the 2023 draft, Mm-hmm. Uh, I did this thing and I talked to my buddy, Mike, you know, who we do what the puck with yeah. you were over yeah. here on Saturday. Yeah. We were actually at the 1993 draft at the palace of Auburn Hills. Okay. I, saw, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was you just there as a fan, you know, as a oh. dumb, I gotta be honest with you. I was half in the bag. We, we were, we were, we were drinking <laughs> about the parking lot, but the, the, the funny thing about that Shep is I knew every one of those guys. I really did. If you go back and you look at, at that draft, mm-hmm. you had at least an opportunity to see pretty much every one of those guys. Okay. Sure. Even sure. Lindsey Hunter, shout out to L Hunter, by the way, it, you, you, you at least had a chance to see these guys or hear these guys. Mm-hmm. I compared, I went back and looked at the 1993 first round and uh, NBA draft to those guys last year. Shep, I didn't know any of those guys. I'm serious. I didn't know any of those guys. I know what I heard about those guys or what I read about those guys. But in yeah, terms of right. being able to formulate my own own opinion, I didn't know jack crap. But, but how much of that is you changing as your years go by? Like maybe you just are, maybe you're just not into basketball as much as you used to be. Uh, maybe, yeah. you know, and, and let's face it, a lot of the collegiate talent is a little watered down um, guys want to make the move and they're not quite ready. If you had a draft this year where you would have uh, Chris Weber and um, well, Sean Bradley wasn't very good. Um, Anthony Hardaway, Jamal Mashburn, right? You'd take that. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember watching Vin Baker play. At, at, at Hartford, and Hartford. he was taking yeah. just ahead of or, or a couple of picks or whatever ahead of Lindsey Hunter and Alan Houston. Um, but that was the rave. Everyone's like, oh my God, this Vin Baker is going to be unbelievable. Do you remember Vin Baker being unbelievable? Uh, I don't. Never forget. Never go. <laughs> Who could forget? It Who was unbelievable. Forget? Yeah. 
Hey, listen, before we get out of here, I want to tell you about our friends at Batch. Um, Batch is the spot for so many events uh, down in Detroit. As a matter of fact, we are going to be out there next week. Uh, when I say we, uh, myself and Blake and Todd and Mike, and we're hoping Bischoff will be out there. I invited Shep. He's busy. Crap beer, scratch kitchen, uh, mm. fantastic food, open seven days a week. And boy, are they going to be busy uh, next week. They've got an NFL trivia thing going on Wednesday night. Then I'm going to be hanging out there starting at 530 on uh, Thursday. Our live show goes 645 until 8 o'clock. I know Lomas is going to be hanging out. Our buddy, mutual friend Lomas Brown, is going to be hanging out there uh, Friday next week. So stop by and say hello. That is the spot. Something for everybody at Batch Brewing down there in Corktown. Check them out, batchbrewingcompany.com. And I highly, highly suggest, look, anything smoked is good. But oh. when you're talking about chicken jerk sausage, you are you are singing Beautiful, beautiful music to my ears. That's for Stop. sure. It, it Stop, please. Good. I'm so hungry right now. It, Stop. It tastes as good as it sounds, Shep. It really yeah, does. I, I bet, man. I can't wait to get there because I've never been there, but I'm looking yeah. forward to going there. Yeah, hopefully we, you, we can get you out sometime and we can do some stuff. Hey, what do you got going on this weekend? Anything you need to plug, my friend? No. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I have, I, have, I have Italian night Saturday night. My wife and I are going oh. out for Italian night, so I'm pretty excited about that. The only thing that would be better than that would be getting barbecue at your house. Yes, you can come over and eat my meat. You can come over and eat my meat. Yeah, you know what, Shep? Honestly, that's where my brain is right now. So I have a pulled pork going on, and then I'm doing some wings, and then I'm doing um, some Rinaldi's does a great Motor City sausage, and and so I got a few of those. And then Just real quick out of the wings, because I love wings. Okay. What what kind are you making? What's the sauce? All right, so here's... pepper or what? I love, just my opinion, I love the spicy garlic. I'm, I'm a big spicy garlic fan. The key for me is I got to put some olive oil on there, right? Because not only, well, it's olive oil, it actually works as a pretty good binder. You'd be surprised. And then I have a couple different rubs that I use. I have a jerk rub that I, that I love to use, but I know that can be a bit much for some people. And then I have, I think it's called made with love rub. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just a, a, a good chicken rub and it's got, like a bold flavor. Mm. Uh, I am somebody I sauce to taste, which means I don't put much sauce on anything because I, I'm a big believer in the meat should speak for itself. But I think with wings, it's a little different. You you have to get a little base on there. So after I cook them about halfway through, I'll kind of soak them in that, in that uh, spicy garlic mix. I'll put a little more rub on there, not a lot. So you got it underneath underneath the sauce and right, mouth is watering that's enough i can make toast that's you it. gotta bake right. them and then great... you gotta bake them man that's just the way it is you, you gotta you gotta let let them do their work on the smoker so mm, sounds so good. do right by your meat and it'll give you a good rub that's exactly it see you're a barbecue guy I, I i respect the hell out of that i can barbecue a little bit i'm gonna go make toast i'll see you later all right shep until next week for <laughs> shep i'm sean belegian thank you share like all that stuff. We'll see you next week. Take care. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you, everybody. Shep and Sean. Featuring Matt Shepard and Sean Belegian. Produced by Todd Glossy and Blake Matcherzak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Glossy. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Still Alive by Anti-Ghost. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the Unsyndicated Podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Call the Unsyndicated Hotline at 248-237-3257.